Hey everyone, a few days ago, there was a proposal that resurfaced to eliminate federal taxes on social security benefits. Now, this is the second time it's been introduced. The first was in 2022. And like the last time, this has hit the news and a lot of people are really excited about this. It's been called a win-win because not only does it eliminate the taxation of social security benefits, but it also extends the solvency of the social security trust funds from 2033 to 2054, and it reduces the federal debt by $8.9 trillion over 75 years. So today, I want to talk about the basics of this and talk about what this bill would give you and what it would take away. So this legislation has been reintroduced by Representative Angie Craig out of Minnesota. She's kept the title as the You Earned It, You Keep It bill. Now, the headline sizzle of this new law would be that Social Security benefits will no longer be subject to federal taxation. So whatever you receive in your benefit payments, those are yours to keep. Now, in the press release announcing this bill, Representative Craig said, this bill is a win-win. It's a tax cut for seniors and a way to ensure more Americans can depend on the Social Security benefits they've earned. And on top of that, it's fiscally responsible. I'm leading this charge in Congress because we need to get money back in the pockets of middle-class Americans. The You Earned It, You Keep It Act will help us get it done. Now, at face value, I agree 100%. I don't think that Social Security benefits should be taxable. And they weren't. All the way from January of 1937, when that first Social Security benefit was paid, until the beginning of 1984. The original thinking was that since FICA taxes, which are the payroll taxes that fund the system, are paid with after-tax dollars, the benefit from them should also be tax-free. Now, there were three separate treasury rulings in the early days that actually explicitly excluded Social Security benefits as taxable income. And then all three of these treasury rulings were reaffirmed in 1971. But all of this changed when the Greenspan Commission that President Reagan appointed in 1981 had to figure out how to fix Social Security. Because much like we're hearing about today, the Social Security Trust Fund was also very close to running out of money in the 1980s, so they had to do something and do it very quickly. So the Greenspan Commission saw taxing Social Security benefits as some of the low-hanging fruit to solve the immediate problem, despite those earlier Treasury rulings. The rationale they used for taxing Social Security benefits was based on how the program was funded. Employees paid in half of the payroll tax from after-tax dollars, and employers paid in the other half, but they could deduct that as a business expense. So this meant that only 50% of payroll taxes were already taxed, the employee portion, and thus up to 50% should be taxable after it was paid. So in late 1983, a law was passed which made up to 50% of an individual Social Security benefit be includable as taxable income. And then once this law was widely accepted, it didn't take long for the federal government to realize that they'd been missing billions of dollars in potential tax revenue. So the obvious next step was to increase taxes again. And in 1983, they did that by adding a second taxation threshold where up to 85% of a Social Security benefit could be taxable. But interestingly, the rationale that they used here to justify this was different than what the Greenspan Commission had used just 10 years earlier. They realized that if you added up the lifetime benefits to an average worker who lived to an average life expectancy, the payroll tax that the worker had contributed only made up about 15% of that lifetime payment. So they looked at that as their contribution. They had already paid tax on that contribution, Therefore, the other 85% that was getting paid to them was income, and thus it should be taxed. So they set a new tax threshold where 85% of a benefit could be taxable. And as these taxation thresholds were developed in 1983, 1993, they were not indexed for inflation. This means that as the years have gone by, more and more people have gotten caught in this taxation net. And today, just over half of all Social Security recipients have to pay some level of tax on their Social Security benefits. But 
There's an old saying among salespeople and some financial advisors and politicians. Sell the sizzle, not the steak. And I think there's some of that going on here. What this new law is really about is not eliminating the taxes on Social Security benefits that are being paid to retirees. It's about increasing taxes on workers who make over a certain amount. This is known as the maximum taxable wage base. This is the limit on income that is subject to the Social Security portion of the FICA tax. In 2024, you pay 6.2% of your income in taxes to support the Social Security system. However, that's only for income up to $168,600. For any income after that, you don't have to pay that 6.2% tax. So, for example, if you make $200,000, you wouldn't have to pay the Social Security portion of the FICA tax on $31,400. But it's also important to note that none of those earnings above that limit are counted towards your future Social Security benefit either. Now, this limit is set to increase every year based on changes to wage inflation. And if you go back to 1972, the maximum wage base was $9,000, and that has steadily increased all the way up to where it is today. Now, the proposal in this bill is to introduce a temporary donut hole where earnings up to the cap are taxable, and then earnings kick back in when the earnings exceed $250,000. So those earnings in the middle would not be subject to the Social Security portion of the FICA tax. But remember, the cap is increasing every year in response to wage inflation. And according to the estimates, the cap will be at $250,000 by about 2035, which means effectively at that point, all earnings would be subject to the Social Security portion of the FICA tax, which leaves the big question, what do you do with those additional earnings? Now, this is where it gets into the weeds, and I don't want to spend too much time here, but effectively what would happen is that they would create a new average index monthly earnings for those earnings that were over 250 or the current law maximum called AIM Plus, and they would credit the primary insurance amount at 2% of that AIM Plus. Now, if it gets closer to actual law, of course, I'll dig into this and likely make a series of videos to cover it. But for now, there's no real reason to get that deep. Ultimately, I don't think there's any way forward for a new law that only benefits the higher income retirees, those who are paying tax on their benefits, but also increases the taxes on higher income earners, those who are still working. But I do think that this shows us what legislators are thinking, and that's important. Ultimately, this type of law has the goal to make the Social Security system even more progressive than it already is. People talk about the possibility of means testing Social Security in the future, but if you understand how the formula works, you'll know that it's already means tested. And a law like this extends that means testing towards what I think is the inevitable outcome of Social Security not even being available for those who are over certain income and savings thresholds. So I do think that this bill is going to die a quick death, and you need to continue planning your retirement as if you are going to have to pay taxes on your benefits. And to this point, this is an area where just a little energy spent in planning can have a big impact and save you thousands because there are a few strategies that can reduce or completely eliminate these taxes. If you haven't watched my video, The Retirement Tax Bomb, you should. In that video, I talk about the calculation the IRS uses to determine how you pay taxes on retirement income, specifically Social Security, and how that creates a danger zone where taxes can be significantly amplified and how you can avoid the pitfall of paying way too much in taxes. So watch that video next. If you'll just click here, I'll see you there.